Uh, so good morning, everyone. Um, today I'm going to quickly talk about something that we've discovered like a month or two ago, uh, and it's kind of amazing that we it took us so long to actually find this, but it might actually help us a lot with with routing uh, in the in the Lightning Network, especially for uh, devices that do not have a good uptime, and it's what we nickname trampoline payments. Um, so, come on. Okay. So uh, we will see this quite a few more times. Uh, Rene will talk about this more in detail tomorrow. But basically, the uh, uh, we have chosen for lightning payments due to privacy reasons. We have chosen a very peculiar way of finding a route from A to B, or well, more specifically, to route a payment from A to B. Um, and Renee will talk about the difference between finding route and actually routing tomorrow. Um, so uh, we all know, or we should all be familiar with how the uh, internet is structured, uh, or how IP works, uh, how the uh, structure in the IP addresses allow us to basically go uh, have a greedy algorithm to find uh, to find a way from A to B without anybody having a global picture of the uh, of uh, how the network is structured. So we don't need global information about the network topology to find a way from, from the sender to the destination. And for, uh, the, uh, for lightning payments, this is, this is quite the opposite. For, for lightning payments, we don't use distance vector routing, which is BGP and all that fun stuff. Um, uh, we use source-based routing for, uh, for lightning payments. Now, source-based routing basically means that every single individual in the network has a total view of the network topology. Uh, we can discuss about how complete this view has to be to actually be effective. Uh, but it basically is the, uh, the job of every single participant in the network to exchange information about which channels exist, which nodes exist, and what the parameters of those channels are, like fees and CLTV deltas, and so on and so forth. And then use that local view of the topology to find a path from A to B. And we then take this path from A to B, which is basically just a long list of, uh, of nodes that we want to traverse in our, on our way to our destination. Um, and we package that up in, a, a, in an onion. And we will see later today how that onion construction actually works. Uh, just a quick question, how many of you have never, ever seen an onion routing protocol before and or need some clarification about that? or what the properties are of Onion protocols. Everybody good? Cool. Um, so what we do is basically we have this list of, uh, of hops with their, uh, with their parameters, and, uh, and we then enc uh, encrypt that in such a way that every single hop only ever sees the next hop in, in the path. Um, so that requires us to manage this map in the first place, right? And this has gotten us to, to a lot of, uh, into a lot of trouble. Because this gossip protocol, that's a lot of information we need to exchange. And especially if you are a mobile device that is, uh, uh, that is basically uh, online for a few seconds before you try to uh, perform a payment, that time might not be sufficient to, have, uh, to actually synchronize with the rest of the network and get, get a good enough view of the network such that your payment attempt has a good chance of succeeding. Um, so this is basically the situation uh, uh, we, we're talking about. So we have a source and a, a sender and a destination for our payment. And we have this network. This node comes online, needs to synchronize all of this, uh, all of this graph structure to its local, uh, local view. Um, that is mostly kept in memory. So that's also quite pricey. If, you, if this network grows large, then we might not be able to actually keep that in memory anymore. And then finding a path in there might, might be costly. So the source comes online, source synchronizes the network view. Now the, uh, the, the user presses pay uh, on some invoice that just, he just scanned. And we will start computing a route from sender to, the, uh, to recipient. Uh, here I trace it in red. And it will then package up the, um, this, uh, uh, this list of nodes in, in an onion. And it will initiate a payment where basically uh, that, that basically tells each hop, hey, you send it here, hey, you send it here, you send it here, you send it here. And then we run into trouble. 
but there is one node that actually doesn't know what to do next uh, because, well, this link is somehow broken. This node is offline or this channel is just not, they were unable to reconnect. Um, for some reason, this does not, this does not go well. Um, so at this point, we, uh, what we basically do is we retrace the entire path back to the source and the source has to do this whole work again, blacklisting this edge here, basically saying, hey, I know now this edge was unavailable a few seconds ago, so maybe I should, I should blacklist that and try another route. And so he ba uh, it basically goes and traces a new route, goes through the entire computation again, creates a new onion, and, uh, uh, and uh, then starts a new attempt. And in this case, the second attempt succeeds. And from my measurement, sort of, we have a success rate of about 60% on the first try. And all, uh, each successive try then gets us an exponentially decreasing chance of actually failing. Um, should also mention this is sort of the worst case because I'm actually picking random nodes in the, in the network that might or might not be online, so it might not even be possible to route to them. Um, but it's quite common that we have to have retries. Um, and that's okay, basically. Uh, but of course, this, this sort of telescoping motion where we uh, do a step forward and then do a step backwards and then have to basically always have to go back to the source and then go out from there again. That's kind of nasty. Okay, so what's the, uh, what are the issues with source-based routing? Um, well, we might not have a complete view of the network. Uh, I mean, this, this, is a, uh, this is a network that communicates asynchronously. Uh, we are actually purposefully slowing down gossip messages in order to uh, sort of uh, get DDoS, uh, DOS vectors under control. We actually add uh, additional latency into how information propagates in the network so that we can sort of clamp down on, on nodes that are very chatty in the network. Um, it's rather bandwidth intensive because uh, uh, the current gossip is about 14 megabytes. Uh, if you start from scratch, um, and that's an optimal communication protocol because if, if you only ever get the information you need, then that's 14 megabytes of data you have to download right now. Uh, you, have to, uh, you have to verify that uh, the signatures on that gossip data, and you have to store it, and you have to keep it in memory, and so that, that's quite, quite an intensive process. And then even for just finding the path itself is Quite intensive. It's, I mean, everybody knows about the Dijkstra protocol, uh, Dijkstra uh, algorithm. It's not, it's not NP complete. Just want to mention that again. Um, but, uh, but it's still a rather costly process because you you actually do random accesses in memory. Uh, there is there is very little we can act optimize there. Um, and on, uh, on low power devices, that might actually cost you a lot of battery, especially if you have to do it over and over and over again. So why are we doing all of this? Well, the reason pretty much is privacy. So we, uh, we decided to, uh, to make the uh, source-based routing the default because it is the most private uh, uh, way of, uh, of routing in a, uh, in a network. Uh, the sender never, uh, never actually tells anybody else who the recipient is. All the, uh, all the people see in the network is um, that there is an onion going through and, and an HLC going through with, uh, along with it. Um, but uh, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't learn anything beyond that. It also creates the most decentralized network uh, uh, possible because the source can now, uh, can now freely choose whatever path it, uh, it wants to take. So one of, the, uh, one of the early ideas that we had was uh, what's called a beacon routing mechanism, where some nodes in the network would, would basically broadcast the beacon, and uh, this beacon would accumulate the path along the way to the edges. And then the edges would have automatically a path to these beacons, and then you could, could arrange to meet at these beacons. Um, but that obviously creates single points of failure, because these beacons now become very important in the network itself. Um, so we decided to push all of, this, uh, all, all of this hard work to the edges where, well, you already know who you are going to pay. But it comes at a cost. So um, 
I think it was two months ago when I when I suddenly received uh, received a message by Pierre Marie um, asking me, "Hey, uh, have you thought about this? Why, is, it, is it just me, or am I missing something? Why has nobody thought about this?" And uh, we later elaborated a bit, and, and now we're calling it a trampoline payment. And uh, basically, what it does is, uh, what would happen if we could delegate the route finding mechanism? So. Um, what we do in the network, basically, we uh, have some nodes that announce themselves to be uh, to, to support the trampoline protocol. Um, we just call them trampoline. Um, so the red nodes in, in, this, uh, in this graph are basically announcing themselves to be trampolines and support this protocol, which allows you to delegate some of these operations to the trampoline. Um, the announcement itself is part of the node announcement, so that's basically just a flag that we add to a gossip message that we already have. And now this, uh, this uh, potential source of uh, uh, the, the potential sender of a payment basically only learns about its direct neighborhood. So what you do is you, you incrementally learn about your neighborhood by pulling more and more information from your peers until you have a set of I don't know, two or three uh, trampolines that, that you know how to reach. Um, so basically, let's say that the sender would then have this view of the network um, and all of this stuff he can forget about. So this is way more efficient to synchronize even if, you, if you're time constrained on a, uh, on, a, on a power constrained device. You can basically just come online, ask your peers and, hey, well, what are your closest trampolines? And it will just tell you and then you prepend your own path to this peer, and you have this number of predefined routes that you know you could use in the future. And so what we, what we do is, if the sender wants to, uh, wants to initiate a payment to this guy, um, we basically, it, it creates an onion that routes from itself to this guy, and the payload that we tell this node is basically, hey, uh, I'm, I'm new to this. I don't have a complete view of the network. Could you please get from here to here? Um, so this node basically now gets the, uh, gets, gets the job of computing a route. Uh, this guy only used one of his predefined routes to one of the trampolines he had. Uh, this guy now goes, uh, goes out and oh, well, we actually send it. Forgot about that step. Now, this guy goes out using his local view of the, of the network topology. Hopefully, trampolines will be online a lot and actually participating in the network and have a good view of the network such that it can offer the service um, to, to mobile devices. Um, this guy now computes this path here and, uh, um, and then finally initiates this payment. But again, we have this issue that this guy, this edge is broken. So in a, source -based, uh, in a pure source-based routing uh, uh, scenario, we would have to go back all the way to the sender. Um, but what we can do in, the, uh, in, the, uh, in this scenario is basically this guy, we, we, go, we only go back to this guy, and this guy can do in-network retries. So we save, uh, we save all of the retry work that we would have to do on the source. We have in-network retries. And this guy is basically, uh, is basically you, uh, uh, is being delegated the hard work of actually finding a path and refining a path if the, the first one is, uh, uh, is broken. Uh, by doing so, this guy le uh, learns a lot about the, new, uh, about the network structure. So he, it, it learns that this edge is basically broken. So it can actually be a lot, uh, it can, uh, can have a lot more uh, up-to-date view of the network than any device that sort of routes on its own. Um, we save this, uh, this distance, and since we expect these to be sort of on a mobile plan and maybe have a high latency and, uh, and stuff like that, this edge is actually quite expensive to traverse for us. Um, this is well connected. It can do this uh, a lot. And uh, the... Uh, one issue that we have is that this guy does not know how much fees to attach, right? Because this guy has no idea what this guy is going to do during this path. But my claim is that is actually positive because, well, by attaching a larger than necessary fee, we overestimate the fee, 
give this guy an incentive to actually do this work for us. So this guy can actually can actually get paid, uh, is incentivized to uh, to keep its routing view up to date and be a successful trampoline such that many people rely on it. Now, have we lost part of our privacy here? Uh, obviously, yes, because this guy now learns that somebody in its vicinity uh, was trying to uh, was trying to route to this node and the amount. Um, but he doesn't really know who, which node it is. So our anonymity set is basically if, if this is if, if we have a three na uh, three hop neighborhood uh, configured here, this guy knows that in its own three hop neighborhood, basically one of these guys must be the center. And depending on the network size and the, depending on the on the size of the uh, of the three hop neighborhood, this might still be a considerable um, considerable set of uh, users. Why trace back to the original trampoline as opposed to maybe a trampoline along the route? Aha, uh -huh, okay. You're, you're thinking a bit ahead because, well, the, we, we actually can do multi-trampoline as well. Um, and we can do multi-trampoline in a way that the trampolines themselves don't learn about anything uh, in this. So why would this guy not use one of the other trampolines? Because then he would have to cede some of his, uh, 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 his incentive to this trampoline because that trampoline also now needs to be encouraged to actually do some work for it. Uh, might be good, but you're saving on latency. You're not saving on, uh, uh, on a lot of the... Uh, uh, you're not saving on, on success rate because this guy will eventually try all the routes that this guy would also have tried. Um, it's kind of questionable how deep you want to have this because if this guy tries 10 times and this guy tries 10 times and all of these guys try, try 10 times, if you have a three hop thingy, then a uh, three, multi, uh, uh, three hop multi trampoline, uh, then you end up with a thousand attempts to reach this guy in the worst case and only then you report failure back. I'm not so sure if we actually want to do that. But it's an option. And we can actually uh, we can actually have this uh, uh, this uh, be a bit more powerful uh, because the multi hop uh, multiple trampoline scenario basically we wanted this guy not to learn about who in his neighborhood was uh, was uh, was the original sender. So what we can do is this guy not only learns about a path to its direct trampoline, but it also learns about the existence of some trampolines in the network. So it knows the identity of this guy and this guy and this guy. It doesn't know how. Uh, it doesn't have to know about the structure of the network that connects these trampolines. So what uh, what uh, what the sender now can do is basically have an onion itself inside of the onion. It's weird pretty quickly, um, but basically it lists a couple of uh, uh, of onion uh, of trampolines, right? Creates this uh, this uh, this inner onion. We just list a list of trampolines, and uh, and it basically then initiates this payment. Let me see if I no, I don't I don't have an animation for that. But uh, basically, this guy would uh, would uh, select this trampoline, this trampoline, and this trampoline, and then create the initial onion that says okay. Um, so it would create the onion containing this one. That's the inner onion. Now it creates an, an outer routing onion that goes from this node through this node to this node and packages the inner onion in the outer onion. And now we initiate the payment, uh, we initiate the payment and uh, this, uh, this guy basically goes out and says, okay, uh, we go through here, this guy unpacks the outer onion, sees, oh, there's an inner onion in this, I unpack the inner onion uh, and sees the identity of this node. Now it goes out, uh, goes out and computes a route from this guy to this guy, potentially going through here. It repacks the inner onion in an outer onion that describes this path, sends it off, and so on and so forth. So if, um, if for example, this edge were broken, this guy could then go and retry the, uh, the, this way around. And we still have uh, in-network retries. But what we have now gained is basically that this guy doesn't know, am I the first trampoline that is in this multi-trampoline path, or am I like number five? 
And so we've, we've removed this link between your three hop neighborhood and the trampoline. And, uh, and this whole thing now becomes basically uh, more private in that the trampolines can no longer learn if their neighbor, the sender is in their neighborhood or if it's in somebody else's neighborhood. We're not sure wh whether we're going to do multi trampolines, but sort of nice and interesting idea. Yeah, you. Yeah, we also move some of the computation back to the sender, right? Because the sender would have to know there's more than one trampoline. Yes, so. What, uh, what we do is uh, we, we would sync your, the, the direct uh, neighborhood to learn about how to reach the first trampoline. And the other ones, we'd only have to learn about their existence. So we can filter out all the edges, and we can filter out all the blue nodes in here that are not trampolines. And hopefully this set is, I mean, you, you can basically stop synchronizing once you're at 100 trampolines, basically. And that's, you, you can keep your, uh, your view of the trampoline network constant, basically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, doing multiple, st multiple steps for the computation, that's a trade-off between latency and... Um, I mean, multiple trampolines is going to increase the latency. Yes, so, so these guys, of course, are incentivized to retry as long, uh, as long as they can, because if they fail to find a path, then they won't get any fee for the work that they already spent, right? So this guy will probably try to uh, try all possible uh, uh, possible paths from it to to the to the recipient, and so hopefully we and and then it would basically fall back to this guy, and he would start trying all of the paths it can get. Actually, this guy just said it it, it can't go on, so it will it will not it will not retry at all. It's just the exit node that retries. Does it ever go backward when you retry? Um, so I mean, if this guy, th this being the exit node, right? This is the last one that that sort of says, okay, you have to get here. Uh, so basically, we in inside of the uh, of the inner onion, we signal that, hey, you're the exit node, and this is the real destination. Because if the destination doesn't support trampoline, we can't really use the trampoline protocol to talk to it. So the entry nodes uh, have a view of the potential senders, and it's not as a view of, and it's not as a, it's not knows uh, to be, right? Yes. Yeah, exactly. But the more distance we get between the two, yeah, uh, the better it's sort of. Right. Yes? I'm a little confused by um, how the, the source uh, makes an assessment of how to map the, the trampoline topology to the uh, actual, because there's, there's some, there's like this exit node and I, I need to assess how, how well that can potentially route to my destination. Mm -hmm. So that implies that the source has some kind of view of the actual topology, not just the trampoline topology, right? Um, At least near the, near the destination. So, I mean, we could, we could use this one as an exit. Right. That's no problem. Um, so the, the reason why we do multi multi onion uh, multi trampoline is, is simply to, to create to create this uncertainty. Hey, I, am I am I the first trampoline or not? Um, the let, let, let's go back to the to this pure source based uh, routing where you you basically have this guy has to synchronize all uh, the the entire ne uh, network topology, and then from this guy we have an onion going out, and that onion is limited to twenty hops. So we break this uh, limitation to 20 hops because now each leg of this can be 20 hops long, right? Because this guy could basically just say, okay, well, I can get from here to this guy through there. Um, but so, so we, we multiply the number of, uh, of total hops we can do uh, by the number of trampolines. Um, we always assume that the network diameter is less than 20, <laughs> because otherwise source-based routing would not be possible. So this guy is actually in the same exact position to find a path to this guy uh, as the source might have been, because we limit the, the diameter of the network to 20. So hopefully this works out. We, we'll see how, how, actually, uh, how well it actually works out. So each of the um, uh, right, trampoline nodes would strive to have Cool topology coverage in that sense. Like it's not yes. Like, it's not like I'm local. There's no local notion there. 
So, so the trampolines would, uh, would still have to have a complete picture of the network. Uh, and we are actually paying for it by, by overpaying fees. Basically, this guy knows exactly, OK, I pay like five Satoshis to get here. So I just got 25 in fees. I just made a, made a plus of 20 Satoshis. And all I had to do was basically find a path from here to here. It's just my picture that, in this case, I chose to get greedily closer. Because, well, that's how, how humans uh, think, right? Yes. But you could give a routing into the invoice. So, I, for example, the, yes. the person who is getting paid could say, hey, use this as an exit trampoline because they know in their right. local view of the network this is that's, a trampoline that is close. Yeah, that, that's but a very good point. Yeah. The other, yeah. I, I think that only two chenille trampolines should work because I mean, the exit nodes can't know uh, the senders of the payments. Mm -hmm. So, only two nodes should break the privacy. Uh, um, which should cover the privacy. Yes, that's that's also a good point. Yes, so we, we might we might limit it to two halves yeah, and, and not uh, uh, not go beyond that. But that's a very good point. Yes, I guess if you're interested in privacy, but you don't know if they're colluding too. So you yeah, but I mean the exit node can't know the singers if you are doing right and if we, and if the packets are uh, of the same length and you can't infer your position wouldn't uh, right. But like, what if? your two trampolines happen to be run by the same person. But from a privacy standpoint, they know where you can. Yeah, but I mean, you can select a payment route on the Lightning Network, and all the up can always be run by someone today. And yeah, yeah. we, we just, by, by adding more, we basically make it harder for a single actor to control all of them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, That's true. Just gives more, I guess. It's it's kind of trade-off-y. Yeah. You had another question? Oh, sorry. Yes. Um, so why not have the recipient now? Uh, Trampoline close to them and provide that information and, uh, to the payee, so they're just trampoline. Whether they should do that or how would they do that? Why not? So if if they if they were to uh, support trampolines, of course that that would be ideal because then they could also pretend themselves to be a trampoline and say, hey, uh, I'm the last trampoline. Oh, I'm also the recipient. So we we could we could actually hide this uh, hide this information quite nicely. Um, but we we, ha we already have a deployed code base, uh, so we sort of also need to support this this exit node paradigm where the recipient does not know anything about trampolines. But sure, like said before, uh, like uh, somebody mentioned before, if we uh, if, the, if the recipient knows about uh, uh, trampolines in their vicinity, they can actually tell the recipient uh, the the sender about how to optimally reach them through one of these trampolines. Um, at some point, these Invoices just get just get huge. Uh, QR codes are weird, by the way. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, okay. This is not effectively going to create a half and spoke architecture then in the network. Um, you are creating a hierarchy in the in the uh, in the network as uh, as you differentiate trampolines and other nodes. Yes. Um, the hope would be that trampolines are so pervasive that they are not all that special. And we hope to actually incentivize trampolines through the overpaying of fees in such a way that every node that is basically online 24-7 will become a trampoline. Um, so like routing nodes and trampoline nodes could become synonymous in a way? Maybe, yeah. So, so that, that's definitely something that, uh, that, that we'd like to see at some point. Uh, it's a service that uh, I would be happy to pay for, especially if I'm if I'm sort of a leaf node in this network, and I don't want to run twenty four seven. We might we we already have this situation basically where we have private channels and public channels. So we're we're just adding some more functionality to the nodes that are already more better citizens in the network. Yeah, I think maybe if we get payment as the correlation. I mean, even if you are running both entry node and exit node, you are not be able to know that it's the same packet, right? Mm -hmm. that, that works if you have an intermediate trampoline. Because if, if this guy sees its second identity as, uh, as, the, as the next trampoline, yeah. then it knows it's, it can just get that. If it's, uh, yeah, if it's really yeah. repeat. So maybe three ops, maybe between two and three. Well, I, I mean, it's, 
it's a trade-off, right? You you by by adding more trampolines, you make it harder, but by removing trampolines, you get a bit more efficient. So yeah, I'm I'm not. We will probably just just implement this and 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 see what people choose to do. My guess is people will be happy with a single trampoline and, and not bother too much. Whoa, so many hands. <laughs> okay. Uh, so in Bitcoin, we have something called a super node where you, you know, can connect to as many nodes on the network as possible. Can something like that happen here? Have like something like a super trampoline? Um, so a trampoline that would be responsible for routing the entirety of the, of the network? How do they connect to as many nodes? Oh, I mean, you're, you're free to open as many channels as you want. Um, we we do have we do have users that have that have created multi uh, uh, several thousands of dollars worth of channels to random peers in the network, uh, uh, big. Um, but what you can't do is force people to actually use you. So as long as we do have alternatives to a super hub that we can route around and choose not to use the super hub, we, we should we should be good. It's about avoiding some points of failures. It's not about, about about this guy learning privacy information as much, right? But yeah, that, that would be an interesting way, a way to measure usage in the Bitcoin network to by operating the only trampoline in the network. Yeah. But isn't this trampoline mechanism, especially if you only have one trampoline per payment, a really big privacy issue? Because the trampoline now knows and learns who is being paid yes. which amount. I mean, that is very brutal in comparison to current privacy models. Well, so, so, so wouldn't there be a way of like making it less severe? Yeah, I mean, the multi-trampoline multi construction is basically that. Yeah, which is weird construction. Because you get circular routes and you get like weird stuff happening. That, that's the price of privacy you pay. Um, it's 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 another price that we are paying for it. The the, uh, the 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 original price we were paying for it was we have to have a complete view of the network and we have to compute everything locally. Nobody nobody says that that is not a better solution. I'm just saying that given the, the given the constraints we have, this might be an alternative. But with the trampoline mechanism, you basically break up the current privacy model completely. Because everybody can choose to be a trampoline payment, and those people who are particularly interested in uh, intruding your privacy will run trampoline nodes. I mean, so there's a huge incentive to do that despite the fees, right? But there should so also be an incentive for this guy to actually run the trampoline protocol. If if it if it values its uh, its uh, uh, its privacy, it should be supporting a trampoline payment. So this this is a uh, this is a transitory phase where. Uh, we have both non-trampoline and trampoline nodes in here. So as soon as this guy basically supports trampoline payments, we can't differentiate it, it from just being an intermediate hop or the, uh, the terminal hop anymore. Would you, would you envision that um, a leaf node would be connected to multiple trampoline nodes? Or to be sort of a single... So it, it, it should at least have multiple ta uh, multiple trampolines in its uh, repertoire. Mm -hmm. I mean, so if, if we funnel all the payments to this guy through this trampoline, then this basically has perfect knowledge about what happens. Sure. Yeah, and combined with AMP and other things, it seems like it will. Yeah. It, it doesn't seem that different from what it, we have today. It, it for sure is a reduction in privacy. I totally agree. Yeah. Uh, but it's a price we are paying for flexibility. The, the, the reason why I'm so confused about it is, um, for example, sharing local channel balances is considered to be like an absolute no-go in this community. Oh yeah, that, that, that's, that's horrible and, and, and because that, it's your proposal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, and and, and, and it, seems, it seems actually less severe in the drop of privacy than the trampolines are, are doing. It, so, so I really, I it, mean, it depends on the. Um, we, we can we can discuss this later, but it basically comes down to how up to date your view of your neighborhood is. Sure. Uh, if if I see thirteen satoshis dropping here, so thirteen satoshis dropping here, I can associate those. <coughs> yes. Uh, 
I'm just wondering, as the green node that's like a foe at the centre here, how, say you're using two trampolines, how are you going to go about estimating for these? Because you kind of just have to err on the higher side, and then say you would like assume 20 halves per trampoline, and you're mm -hmm. like the highest thing you can. Isn't there then an incentive for a trampoline that gets this thing, it's looking as, oh, it's like 19 halves, and actually just to not bother routine? Mm -hmm. So how would you end up not paying always the highest fees possible? That that's um, yeah. I mean that 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 is a, that is a very interesting question. Um, the um, so you as a sender should have a good idea of what you're prepared to pay. Uh, so for example, uh, Sea Lightning caps the uh, the fee and the amount of fuzz we have in in the final payment uh, to zero point five percent. Uh, of the transferred value, um, and in this case, you don't you don't have enough information to, add to know the exact fee that is it is going to cost. So, in my mind, you should always be attaching the maximum fee you are prepared to pay, because if you weren't prepared to pay that in the first place, that would not be the maximum you were prepared uh, prepared to pay. And so, this this is this is what in game theory is often called a truthful mechanism. Don't have a proof that it is truthful because game theory is weird, uh, but uh, it, uh, I think it might be a truthful mechanism for uh, for a maximum fee tolerance, basically. Um, so this guy would would basically attach as much as many fees as uh, as it can, and then uh, then decrement the uh, the the fees it, it drops off at every every trampoline by a factor of. Now, this guy, being the exit node, of course, can grab all the remainder of the fees, but that's okay. Because you were happy to pay those in the first place. Yes? Uh, sorry, I didn't quite understand. Uh, you mentioned the destination node has, has incentive to, to follow the trampoline protocol or via trampoline um, node itself, but how does it ensure that the source will, will route through it? Uh, well, it basically, it's telling the, the, the source, hey, I'm a trampoline. Okay, easily. So the, the source is okay that it knows, hey, I'm the destination. Sure. 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 No, given we have the invoice, given we have the uh, pre-image as a proof of payment, I mean, does anyone has thing to do repository of uh, successful invoice or kind of something like that to get data from the network and being able to know the fees from? Uh, you mean? That, that, mm -hmm. the who is collecting this repository of invoices? I don't know. So, so these guys are learning uh, payment hashes and pre-images anyway. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, just trying to solve the problem of how do you estimate fees without putting the, without having a view of the program network. So yeah. Maybe you can ask. Oh, so, so, or... so you mean the sender can actually learn about uh, previous successful payments and adjust it? Sure. It's. I mean, we, we can always lowball the fees and then just retry starting from the, from the source, but... Yeah. Sure, that, that, that's a better foundation without only relying on your own uh, local data. I mean, some mm -hmm. kind of sharing data between nodes without... Oh, we, 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 can, we can always get smarter. Uh, yeah. it's, uh, it's just... So, so this, this proposal is just about the mechanics of, of actually routing onion in onion and all of that fun stuff. But uh, yeah, we, we can definitely get smarter. And uh, obviously, I don't have any uh, all the answers just right now, because we haven't even implemented this yet. So uh, if you want to implement it, 